at the West Michigan Quilt Guild, Quilts on the Grand 2016. Barbie Brooks from the Backstreet Quilts in Bad Axe, Michigan, came and taught us to do hand applique with wool. I think you'll really like this. I'm very excited to be sharing wool applique with all of you. It is my passion. It is my passion of the quilting world, and, and our store really shows that. We love handwork. So what we're gonna, today I'm gonna show you a very simple beginner's project with wool using the freezer paper method applique. So we're going to begin by tracing all of our patterns with freezer paper. Um, what most of you have in your kitchens, right? And um, so we're gonna take this piece of freezer paper, we're gonna lay it down on top of our pattern and with a pencil, we're gonna just quickly draw that shape. Most of the time with applique patterns, applique patterns are already in reverse, which means that rather you use the freezer paper method or you use the um, a fusible method, then your pattern is already ready for you to use whatever method you need. So you're going to quickly, with the freezer paper method, we're going to quickly draw the patterns that we need. Then we're going to take our scissors, after we have our patterns cut, or drawn, I'm sorry, traced, we're going to cut them out, and we're going to leave an area around the shape we have just drawn. I haven't cut it out right on the lines. Then we'll take all of these once they are cut and with our iron on our wool setting we will take our freezer paper and we will lay it to the top of our wool and we will take it to our iron and we will iron it in place. And it doesn't take very long for that to happen because what we're doing with the iron and the freezer paper is melting the wax that's on the back side of the freezer paper and it is adhering it then to the wool. The next step is to then take your shape that we have traced and we're going to do the final cutting and with your favorite pair of scissors and I recommend for wool work with wool applique that you use a pair of scissors that are very sharp and will cut right to the tip. Do you see how this, I can cut right to the tip with this pair of scissors? And the other reason that that is um, able to do that is this pair of scissors also have a serrated edge. So I recommend with wool applique that you also use a pair of scissors that have serrated edges and will cut right to the very tip of the tip edge of the scissors. So now we've cut all of our pieces to their final size and this is how very easy the freezer paper comes off because the wax does not stick that long and it also does not bother your wool. It doesn't leave any kind of residue on your wool, okay? And then I'm going to take this and I will lay it in its final position on my wool piece. And as you can see, I have already stitched the J, I've already stitched my piece of snow, and I've also stitched my O, and now I've laid the Y on. Now, I like to use two methods of pinning my um, applique in place. I either use a, a needle, a glass head needle, which is very fine and doesn't distort when it goes in, or the other method that I like to use is using a stapler and just staple it in place, and then I'm not um, directly stitching around the head of a pin or a, you know, or the large ball on the end. But I love the stapler method, and the stapler method too doesn't leave any holes in your wool. 
So after you've traced it and you've got it in place, you're ready now to stitch. And so I'm, I'm, using, I'm using pearl cotton, which, um, and I like size 12 the best for especially small work or medium work. And I use a variety of pearl cottons. I love Valdani pearl cottons, and I love Percentia pearl cottons. But DMC is out there. There's, you know, there's all kinds. And the thing with wool applique is that you can also use your floss. Many of us still have floss in our homes from when we were embroidery and our cross-stitching years ago. And so floss or pearl cotton, either one of them, work well for wool applique. And the other thing that I love about wool applique too, and especially what I'm showing you here today, are just basic embroidery stitches. The blanket stitch is what I'm um, doing the majority of this work with. Um, but then like the O, that's been done with the stem stitch or the back stitch. And those are the only two stitches that are used in the project that I'm working on today. Now the projects behind me that are hanging on the wall um, there's three different levels there. The project here to, the, to the, my left is a more intermediate project, and so is the project to my right. That's a more intermediate, where the one right behind me is very much a, an advanced stitcher's project with a lot of different types of stitching on it. But what I'm showing you today is a very basic beginner's, very easy beginner's project. So now I've threaded my needle and I have, I like a chenille needle um, and what the difference between a chenille needle and an embroidery needle is, is a chenille needle has a larger eye. It also has a very, it also carries a, a sharp point and I like a size 24 and it comes in many different sizes, but it, a lot of it just depends on your own personal preference once you start your stitching. Um, I like a little finer, shorter needle, that's why I use a 24. But the majority of people will start with a size 20 or a size 22 chenille needle. So I'm going to do basic embroidery. The blanket stitch is a punch in onto your, onto your wool and a right straight back down. You're always going to carry your thread also towards your body and try to always carry your stitching um, to come back to you and the consistency of the blanket stitch is the most beautiful when it is consistent. And as I'm stitching I'm concentrating that my stitches are approximately a quarter of an inch apart, not only here from stitch to stitch, but also that it's a quarter of an inch in and down, even though this is a small piece. It's a punch in, you're coming up on the edge of the applique with your needle, your thread is under your needle, I'm pulling my thread seat over my needle my, or my needle over my thread and pulling and making a nice square 90 degree stitch along the edge of my applique. The other really nice thing about wool applique is that it's a raw edged applique so you don't have to finish your edges with wool. Um, you want to be careful when you're choosing your wools though and where you're buying your wools from, that they are wools that are stable and have been felted, or if they have not been felted, then you need to learn the process of how to felt your wool before you use it. You, in wool applique, you don't want to use any wool that hasn't been pre-shrunk because you want it to be very stable in your project. So I'm going to, you're just going to continue this all the way around. I think this is one of the most important steps that you learn in um, blanket stitching right from the beginning is that I recommend that there's always three stitches right here in the corner 
any corner that you come to, there's one stitch. This is the second stitch in the corner, and we're going to turn the corner and come right back in. I'm hoping they're catching this. And the third corner, the third stitch in the corner, making it a square corner as you come around with your stitching. And we're going to continue right on around this piece, this prepared piece. There's many different, um, let, as I'm stitching here and you're watching me stitch, let's, I'll talk a little bit more about some of the different things that wool applique can become um, as you gain your skill in your stitching. Um, many stitchers go to using what's called wool thread, just general thread. They whip stitch in place with their wool thread that then that thread becomes a part of the actual fiber of the wool and you use thread that matches your wool so that your stitches become almost invisible. Just like in your needle turn applique, um, when people you know, use those tiny, tiny stitches to hold their applique in place. Well, we're in the more advanced stages of wool as you um, gain your um, skill, that becomes an avenue to then go on to the stitching that is seen in the one behind me that I said was more advanced. Um, you stitch everything in place with the wool thread right along the edge and then you come back and add all the different decorative stitches that you find um, on those pieces. So we're going to continue right on around this piece. Here I am again at the corner. I put one stitch in. I'm coming and laying the second stitch right on the corner. Then I'm making the curve and coming back and placing another stitch in that area and coming right on around. And then we, you can't see that corner? Okay, let me see if we can do this. I'm coming to another corner, can you see that? And I've got one stitch in here, then I'm going, oh dear, then I'm going down and placing another stitch. Do you see that? That's the second stitch. And then I'm coming around the corner and I'm back in that same stitch, only a little further down. And it's, do you see that? I know the brown on the brown is kind of hard to see, isn't it? After the um, demonstration, we can. So we're going to continue on around. When we're totally finished, then of course all that you're going to finish up is the embellishments, if there's any more embellishment. and follow your pattern and finish it up the way, again, with blanket stitch. So that's the basics to wool embroidery. And um, I, I love it because it's quick, it's easy, it's portable, it can go with you. And um, I just, I enjoy it and want to pass that passion on to other people. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and might even try some wool applique on your own. I think you'll find it very enjoyable and what I like best about it is it really doesn't require that much precision. It's the type of thing that you can do while riding in a car. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. We wouldn't want you to miss a single show. Please share us with your friends and leave a comment. We would really love to hear from you.